Hello, welcome to the Natural History Museum. My name is Matt and I'm here with Joe and we've been talking about seahorses. If you haven't seen that already, check out our previous video, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about these pretty fascinating creatures. In fact, we've got one here. They're pretty uh, interesting uh, little things. And on top of all of this, it's also the males that get pregnant and give birth. Joe, how does that happen? Yeah, so it's actually a really interesting process. So the females have the eggs, as we would expect in most animals, um, but they release them into the male. So the male has them in the brood pouch, and that's where the male would fertilise them himself. And during this process, uh, the male uh, carries the eggs throughout the whole of the gest gestation. So for the whole 25 days, um, it develops this kind of pseudo placenta. And so it provides all of the nutrients that it kind of, the eggs would need. So calcium and fats to form the skeleton. And they also remove all of the waste uh, that the eggs produce, so like the carbon dioxide. So what we would breathe, the eggs produce as well. And the, the seahorse is able to get rid of that as well. Awesome. So if the, uh, the females are giving the eggs to the males, does that mean that the males uh, are a little bit more picky, a little bit more choosy over, over their partners if they're the ones receiving Yeah, definitely. The eggs? So we've kind of seen in some research recently that the males prefer larger females. So in nature, kind of the bigger you are, the more successful you are. So a larger female is able to produce larger eggs, and then these larger eggs would produce larger offspring. And if you're a larger offspring, you're more likely to survive just because of how nature is. And so it's a really interesting um, process. Yeah. Right, that's really sort of subverting uh, what you might expect. And that's quite common for uh, a, a few more animals, especially sort of fish. We've got, we've got a clownfish over here. They're, yeah. they're particularly interesting, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So definitely um, sex is very not bi non-binary within the animal kingdom. So we have a lot of animals that are kind of hermaphrodites, so they're both male and female. But what's really interesting about the clownfish here is that they change genders throughout their life. So what you have in the clownfish is a dominant female and her mating partner, so the male. If the dominant female kind of disappears, for whatever reason, if she's predated by a giant barracuda in Nemo, <laughs> um, you have the dominant, the male, changing into the female. So then the male becomes the female and she then becomes the dominant female who's mating. And one of the submissive males then becomes her mating partner. And so this is really interesting because it shows that in, even in animals, sex isn't necessarily, but isn't necessarily binary. Yes. So, yeah. so you're saying in Finding Nemo, Marlin uh, should have been a female. He will have become a female, oh, yes. Um, a little bit of a different ending because it suggests what Nemo would have become. Ah, oh, of course. <laughs> um, well, so this is clownfish, but there's it's, it's not. There's a few fish that do it. In fact, yeah, uh, yeah. There's fish that do it more than once. Yeah. So the clownfish it changes from male to female once, but then you also have kind of the chalk bass that we found uh, can switch genders up to twenty times a day. So it's massive. Um, massive uh, diversity mm. um, and what's really interesting about the chalk bass is that it comes from a place of uh, the parental care so with chalk bass they share this responsibility because being a female is very costly producing eggs is a very costly process and so chalk bass kind of get around this by switching with their mating partner and so they pr both produce the same number of eggs and so if the female is kind of producing less eggs at one mating part, uh, time, then she becomes the male and the male becomes the female, and then they mate again um, in this new kind of sex position. Wow, awesome. Yes, wow. it's fascinating. That is uh, super interesting. Thanks for talking to me today, Joe. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and learned something new. If you did, then let us know down in the comments below. And as always, like and subscribe for some more content from the Natural History Museum.